welcome everyone to another edition of MacBridge Consult Media Chatroom for Lagos, Nigeria, Job Professionals in the non profit Sector. And so last week we had a wonderful time. We had our first male guest and it was wonderful. If you have not seen the clip, please go and check on our YouTube channel. Now my name remains Faith Akolabi, the founder of MacBridge Consult. And I'm your host for today. And today is going to be an exciting one because we are hosting a founder of our organization. And you might want to meet her. Before we get to meet her, we're going to go on a very short break. And when we come back, you will have her introduce herself. Welcome back from that short break. And so I would like you to meet our guest for today. And let's get to meet you. So tell us your name and what inspired you on this journey. Hi, everyone. My name is Adeola Ogunkolade. Well, I'm the founder of African Fashion Development and Empowerment Center. Simply just call it Avdec. All right. <laughs> All right. Avdec is a social enterprise um, that I founded sometime in 2015, born from my personal experience in. Um, a not so good experience in the fashion industry in Nigeria. So I found that out there from a pinching point where it's actually a very personal story and I would like to quickly say it. So okay. as we all know as Nigerians, um, Nigerian tailors are very, very, uh, <laughs> what's it called? I don't want to use Wonderful the good name. Wonderful people. <laughs> yes, they're amazing people in keeping to time and delivery uh, in terms of um, in their businesses. So I happened to be one of the victims, and then this happened to me um, sometime a few weeks before my wedding. And then uh, I, got, I got my wedding dress, and then it was all very beautiful, as usual, uh, bright, preparing to get married. And then um, maybe because of the excitement and so many activities, I lost a few pounds, and I needed to have the gown amended. I mean, just to um, fit it up a bit so I look beautiful on my day. So I took it downtown. I looked for a very nice place because, you know, it's a wedding gown. It looks a lot of complications and so many things you done on it. So I, I, got, I got a very highly recommended place, um, premium. And then I gave them my gown, told them my wedding is in two weeks. Please, can you please amend and do this? Do this. We agreed. And then they asked me 70% upfront. I paid and I made them say the date that I was coming back for my wedding dress. And they told me a day before my wedding. And I said, I was too close. That's kind of risky that, uh, I mean, and they assured me they've never disappointed. They would never do that. And they know how important this day is to them and to me. And with all the fancy words like business we use to make a customer convert, I trusted them and I left. The day before my wedding, I strolled in and I found my gown on the same spot where I left it. I mean, I mean, it was, me? it was, yes. So I mean, like, this is almost, this is less than 24 hours. And my wedding gown is sitting on the fancy chair very close to the rack. And I asked, they said, yes, 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 we've opened it. And then we've done a few works that all we need you to do right now is give us the balance. For real? Yes, for real. I burst into uncontrollable tears. Oh, I cried my heart so out. Funny. I mean, I was so heartbroken. I was devastated. There was nothing you could use to console me on that day. But my best friend, um, that was my, um, my ch um, maid of honor, my chief bridesmaid then, she tried very hard. And then she said, you know what, Adjola, we can fix this. We can fix this. Let's just take it, look for somewhere else and have it fixed. But I know that was impossible because then that was 2010 and it, there was no much um, directories and there was really no much information on the internet about where to get things done within 24 hours. And it was really, really very, very, very heartbreaking for me. And so what I did then was I trust my friend and then we went downtown Again, we, we had to go on foot because we were looking for what we, we don't even have um, an idea where we will find. So we started walking from store to store 
and everybody looks at the gown and they say, oh my God, this would take us two weeks. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the list was, I mean, I, I could do it for you because it's, it's really, it means a lot to you and it would take me two days and my wedding is in less than 24 hours. Oh so I, I cried all the way while I was trekking. We went through 11 oh. different enterprises and they all said no. I mean, they were, they were even sincere to say no. Uh, you know, as we speak, uh, at the time I was um, about to give up, it was almost um, 5 p.m., 5 p.m., mm-hmm. wedding eve, 5 p.m. I have missed my bridal showers, <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> waiting for me back home to see me. So there were so many things happening, and I, I, I was, my face was swollen. I cried so hard that I could barely speak. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what happened was, um, for me that day was, I told my friend, you know what, let's just, I really don't have so much money because it is not in the budget, you know, to buy another gown. And I have dreamt about this day. I mean, I saw it in my dreams with well, my dress. You're waiting for somebody wants to, I feel like lifetime. somebody wants to just, <laughs> you know, wait. So, um, I, 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 I was about giving up when somebody just told me when we walked down one of the bridges in Lagos and we were asking word of mouth this time because in no shame in it, I was just asking because I was helpless. And so people would be like, oh, okay, why don't you just try this tailor on this side? Maybe they can do something, you know. Somebody else will give me a, another place and then exactly 7.30 p.m., I told my friend, you know what, I give up. I mean, I, I'm just giving up. She, she, she started crying with me, like, what are we going to do? <laughs> like, so somebody under the bridge, I mean, Lagos Bridge, I don't want to call it the bridge, but there's somebody under the bridge saw us, two young ladies crying. I was like, what is wrong with you? Well, we explained ourselves, and the man, it was the man, said, oh, there was, there's one lady, although the place is not so... Um, fancy but at least i think she can help you fix your gown and then we went down one corner to another corner it just led us to one very small lowly community i mean the place was really really um vivid with poverty i mean it was obviously living in either homeless or they just pick two things and they build a shanty for themselves and they are living there faith that was where i found the woman that fixed my gown Oh my. Oh that was my. exactly where I found the woman that fixed my gown. And this lady that fixed my gown, she fixed it under three hours. When we got there, we saw she had children, three kids under five. Three kids under five. They were all clamoring for our attention at that time. She, she, she didn't have lights. She didn't have generator. It was obvious she could not afford it. But she said, you know what, auntie? She couldn't even speak good English, though. She was like... Make I help you do it and I feel you. It means let me just try do my best. Uh, and okay. I will make you smile. I will do my best. And then she said we should give her like two hours. I mean, two hours means from nine o'clock, two hours means till 11, right? She fixed my gown around 11. And then with torchlight and um, candle, we saw all she did. She fixed all the errors. She even put some makeshift things, put some flowers in some places that could not be amended. And my gown came back alive. I, I didn't care. I mean, but I, I, I kissed this lady. I hugged her. I'm like, you saved my life. I mean, it looked like it, it means a lot to some people. It means a lot to me. I, I didn't get to leave um, the place until 11 45 p.m that was a few minutes before midnight it was even my husband to be that came to pick me like you before you will not kill my bride <laughs> like they said it's a taboo for a groom to see a bride before but he came yeah. to rescue me i feel like <laughs> then, I, I had i had yeah you know i had my wedding and and the ceremony went very beautifully it was okay. it was it was a memorable day and like every bride I forgot about that incident and I moved on. But two weeks down the line, I, 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 I had this urge in my heart to look for that woman, to go and say thank you and give her a little gift. Aside that I paid her, but I just wanted to say thank you, you know. So then I went back there to that place, to that corner, to that small shop, mm-hmm. and they told me that she's no longer there. Oh. That the landlord chased her out. I mean, like I said, what about our kids? She said she went away with her kids because 
she couldn't pay her rent. She was sick and then she couldn't work. She couldn't pay her rent. I don't know if she pays daily, but the landlord was just tired and drove her out. I mean, evicted her forcefully. Such a I felt bad. Do you understand? I felt really, really bad. I, at first, I blamed myself for not coming earlier. Maybe we could have found a way or something to yeah, okay. assist her or work something out. But in between, I, I was really bent on finding this lady. I, I decided in my heart to call her Ada. So Ada was nowhere to be found. I asked different neighbors around there if they knew where she went. They said no. But what was very... Um, um, resounding from everybody's statement was she was sick. I mean, she was sick and that means she was helpless. And from the look of things, I mean, she, I don't think she was financially able to, you know, um, meet her needs. So, so what I decided to do when I went back home was uh, I was really disturbed and then I decided to solve it, the problem. Not the problem like it is, but I decided to do something. I then um, put online that on my on my social media page that do you know any um, low income earning tailor, fashion designer or creative woman that, that is struggling with her business and needs support at this period? I mean, we will be offering training, mentorship, and um, some soft funding to help with the business. So I just put it up out there, and then I was hoping to find at least 100 women. I was hoping to find 100 women. I put up a Google form, and um, at the end of 24 hours, at the end of 24 hours, I got not 100 applications I was looking out for. I got 2,750 within 24 mm. hours. That was when I knew that it was really, really a problem. And there are so many other others out there that is looking for help. I mean, yeah. it is one thing to be creative. It is one thing to be talented. It's another thing to be able to um, maximize this talent to earn sustainable income for yourself and for your family. Yeah. And many of these women out there are a um, source of support, financial support for their family. So, I, I was overwhelmed at the responses and I called out just to be sure that these people are real. I said, okay, come for physical interviews and let's see what you can do and bring bring a sample of your, your work. They all came. A different timing I gave them. They all came. I was about, had to call friends, family, people, come and help me. I have gotten into big trouble. People, <laughs> come and help me. <laughs> <take> me. <laughs> I did because I was trying to shop at least just a hundred. And so from there, I, the 100, like a pilot, uh, we, we organized the uh, entrepreneurship training, business side of fashion training, and then we connected them to mentors, and uh, we got some microfinance bank to come support with such grants and loans that have very credibly reduced interest rates. The program was successful and I was really, really happy that I could help these people. Then I decided, you know what, I would like to do this. I felt happy, I felt fulfilled doing it and I said, I would like to do this, I would like to do more. So that was how I started. I, wow. I didn't have a name then, but I started yeah. Baby Steps and then it's been You're an amazing journey all the way. Wow, around. wow. So, I'm yeah. sure. Yes. Wow. I'm sure you all at home have been having a wonderful time listening to our guest today. But we have to go on a very short break. And when we come back, we will um, listen to more of our story. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome back um, from that short break. And we've been speaking to Mrs. Adiola Ogunkolade. Um, the founder of Aptec, and she told us her story, very touching one of how she started her journey in the non-for-profit sector, and today she has a structured organization. So you can start up something, as long as you have the desire, the passion to make a change. There's so much problems out there that you have a solution for. So we're going to continue with question before we round up on today's um, edition. Okay, mm -hmm. so do, do you require any form whatsoever to start up an NGO? And if not, what's your advice for those watching us that want to start up an NGO and they don't know how? Basically, um, for me, from my experience, I think you, you really do not need okay. anything but the heart and the passion to solve a problem. 
So I started because I wanted to solve a problem. And then every um, business out there, every solution, every organization is how to solve a problem. And then if it is in the not-for-profit sector, it just means that you are willing to do it selflessly and will not mind not getting paid for it. And so for me, I was ready to solve that problem without getting paid. I could do it again and again, and it gives me so much passion and it gives me so much joy and fulfillment to repeat. So basically, anybody that wants to start a not-for-profit or a charitable organization, first you need a lot of passion, and then you need to the technical know-how. I mean, after passion, you need the knowledge. You need to know how to yeah. run the organization. Yes, you need to get a lot of information for that particular course that you feel you fit to solve. So if you are called to solve the problem in um, of tuberculosis so you need to know a lot about tuberculosis you need to breathe and drink and eat tuberculosis i mean literally <laughs> so but you need to know a lot about it and you need to do a lot of research you need to also uh, look for a mentor i mean somebody that has that already ahead of you in that journey you need to um, you need to let them hold your hands in get it on and getting by quickly because it will really help and help you from their own experiences you need to learn a couple of things faster and save you a lot of time wow wow we want to say thank you so much for um accepting our invite in a very short thank you for having me thank you for having uh, me <laughs> okay guys so you've heard it from our guest and this is where we turn the curtains down until next time but please Subscribe to this channel, share the link with your friends. And my name still remains Faith Akolabi. And until next time, bye-bye.